Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Math Zone African Motives. Uh, still on our mathematics and six, and this is differentiation. Uh, and it's in this platform, we just want to have an introduction of the partial derivatives, uh, which is one of the uh basics that you need in your N6. Uh, that is the, the first part actually that you need to understand in your mathematics N6. The, the, the use of the partial derivatives. What is it that you are talking about? All right, let us consider uh, a situation of uh, having maybe a cylinder, all right, from our uh, measurement. All right, let us say we have got a cylinder in this case, all right. Uh, given a cylinder, what we understand is that the measurements are uh, taken maybe meters, centimeters, or whatever that you have, but uh, these are the properties that you have. Uh, which uh, as follows, we've got uh, the, the radius from the center to this point, we've got the radius and we've got the perpendicular height. All right, if you were to talk about the total surface area, if you are to talk about the volume, you will see that it is going to be affected by these constants, uh, by the variables, I mean, uh, radius and the height, these two variables. These are the ones that are affecting our volume of the surface area. All right, we understand that the volume of a cylinder is given by uh, pi r squared h, which is the base area times the height. Now, taking a closer look, we have got pi r squared, which is this r there, which is a constant. Remember, a radius is given a measurement that can change the same thing with this uh, height. It can change. So the volume is affected by two things, the radius and the height. These are the variables that we have, whereas this is a constant. Pi is a constant. Pi is a number. Remember, this pi uh, can be approximated to 22 over 7, uh, which is a decimal. It's a number, that one. So meaning to say whatever that you're talking about, about this pi is representing what? A constant. So this is a constant. And in this case, we've got uh, the variables. So what it means is that uh, our volume in this case is being written in terms of the radius and the height. That is what it means. So in normal derivatives, in our normal derivatives, we understand why it's supposed to be written in terms of x or whatever that we have only one variable there. And we find the derivative of y with respect to x. So this time now, it's a, it's, a, it's a changed up scenario because if you check, there are now two variables. Instead of one, there are now two variables to be considered. So on that condition, you have to find the derivative of this volume with respect to one of the variables at a time. So it's a simultaneous condition. Remember, simultaneous, that's at the same time. We can find the derivative of the volume with respect to the radius or we can find the derivative of the volume with respect to the height. There are two things now. These are now partial derivatives. With respect to radius, with respect to the height. All right? These are two things that we have. So the question is, how can we find the derivative of this volume with respect to the radius and also the volume with respect to the height? How is that possible? Okay. Take a closer look of what is happening here. I say there are two cons there, there are two variables that we have that you're working with at the same time. If I had to take this in this scenario, this is how you differentiate. The volume is equal to pi r squared h. So it follows that when you are to find the derivative with respect to a certain variable, in this case, we are considering our variable as the radius, the derivative of the volume with respect to, with respect to what? To the radius. We are dealing, we are working with the radius. So at that moment, what it means is that the other variable that we have, which is the other variable, there is what? Is the height. The other variable given, which is our height, is now represented as a constant. So at that moment, H is representing a constant. What does it mean? It is just the same thing as pi. Remember, pi is a constant. A constant is just like two, just like four, just like seven, 10. These are constants, num numbers. So it's just like a number. So meaning to say, if you take this as a number, just, just take a closer look like uh, 
it was written as v is equal to pi r squared times h and h is a number like two so what does it mean it means this is simply two pi r squared like this I, I, i'm just giving you an example like that like that and you want to find the derivative of the volume with respect to the radius so it means the two pi is just a constant and you know how you differentiate the constant is not affected what is affected is what you are differentiating, which is the radius. So you're going to differentiate r, which you drop, you drop the exponent. So it's going to be 2r, you subtract 1. So it's 2r. Then you multiply to these 2 pi. So in the same sense that you are taking h like a number like 2, this is the same thing that you're supposed to also keep in mind. h is a constant, guys, at this moment. So it means that the derivative of this volume with respect to the height is going to be given as what, all right? Sorry for that. Let me put the right one. It's going to be given as, remember we said H is a constant. So pi and H are constants. So we're going to have pi H not affected at this moment because these are constants. We are differentiating with respect to the radius. The radius is our variable. This is the one affecting our question. So we are going to differentiate the radius, remember? This is what we have r to the exponent of 2. How do you differentiate that? You drop the exponent, which is 2. Then you subtract 1 on the exponent. So it will be r to the exponent of 1, which is same as r. So the derivative of r squared is 2r. From there, we can multiply. Uh, this will be uh, 2 pi r h. If you want to write it that way. That's it. We have differentiated with respect to the radius. At that moment, h was not considered it was considered as a constant all right i want you to see this guys the derivative of the volume with respect to the height this time all right this will be given as okay let's let, let, let's consider the same thing like just like the previous part we said as we are differentiating with respect to the height what does it mean it means at that moment the other variable which is the other variable that we have there is the radius that is our other variable so at that moment, the radius is going to be considered as a constant. That's the whole scenario. The radius is, the, the R now, R is a constant this time. So if R is a constant, whether it's, a, it's a raised to the exponent of 2R squared, is like 2 squared, like 3 squared, it's a number, it does not change. It remains as a constant. Whether it's raised to which exponent, that part does not affect us. So if it is a constant, how do we differentiate? Let's take a, look, a closer look like uh, it was given as 22H and you want to differentiate. What is the derivative of 22H? The derivative of 22H is what? It's, it's 22 because H is being raised to the exponent of one. We just take the number that is affecting what? H, just like it's 22X. The derivative of 22X is what? It's 22. So the derivative of this is just what? Pi R squared. The number that is affected because R is a constant. So in actual sense, we're supposed to write pi r squared, which is our constant, this one. It's a, it's a constant at this moment because we said r is a constant. Already pi is a constant. So this whole part is now representing a constant, just like pi h, the previous case. Then we determine the derivative now of h. What is the derivative of h? The derivative of h is just a 1, right? It's just like you're differentiating x. What is the derivative with respect to x? It's a, it's a 1. So that is the situation. So meaning to say here, we are simply multiplying pi r squared times one, which is pi r squared. So this is the derivative of the volume uh, with respect to them, with respect to the height in this case. So th these are your partial derivatives. At a one point, the other is a constant, the other is a variable. What you are differentiating with respect to is treated as a variable at that moment. R is the one that is a variable. That is the letter to be considered. The other letter, which is H, at that moment, it's not considered. It's, con it's referred to as a constant. So it does not affect anything that has to do with R. So you ignore anything about H. You focus on differentiating R, depending with the type of question that you are given. All right. Uh, I want us to take a closer look of this. All right. Uh, before we take a closer look of the questions that we might be given or that we might have, I just I just want us to have some of the other things that can actually be given uh, in our derivatives. So like I said, uh, let us just take a closer look like uh, Z is given. 
because we said these are two functions that, I mean, two variables that are at the same time, but it consider them different. Let's say we've got Z is given in terms of X and Y. So we are going to expect one to find the derivative of Z with respect to X, which I said for you to have the derivative of Z with respect to X, at that moment, Y is going to be considered as a constant. So you take Y as a constant. So in this case, you're gonna take Y as a constant. Take Y as a constant and differentiate and differentiate. Right, so there we're gonna differentiate with respect to, with respect to X. So you're gonna differentiate with respect to X. All right, we can have a condition finding the derivative with respect to Y. So it is the same thing just like the previous case. This time, since it is with respect to Y, it means X is considered as a constant. So we are going to take X as a constant. So we take X as a constant. All right, so the moment we take X as a constant, what is going to happen? We are going to differentiate in this case with respect to Y. All right, so this time we are considering Y so we have to differentiate with respect to that y, all right? Sorry for that, guys. With respect to y, with respect to y. But x is considered as a constant. So that's not the only thing. We can also have the second order of the derivatives of this. So the second order follows that. We can have a derivative like um, the second derivative with respect to x, all right? With respect to x like this. So these are now second order. So what it means there, you just need to understand your formulas. You need to find the derivative. Take note, this is a two here, and this is also a two. So what it means is that you separate the derivative with respect to X, all right? So you're gonna have the derivative with respect to X of the derivative of Z with respect to X. So this will be of the derivative of Z with respect to x. So I just want to give you a tricky part if you do not like uh, understand your formulas. What you just need to do is that if you multiply back this d times this uh, uh, times dz, it must give you this. If you multiply dx times dx, it must give you dx squared. So if it does not give you exactly what you have here, then it means it's wrong, right? It's, it'll be wrong. The formula will be wrong. So you need to know your formulas, guys. Uh, I just hope you find a way to memorize this uh in a, in, a, in a, you just find a better way uh to memorize this all right the derivative of z with the respect to y squared also with uh under the uh the second order this is the same thing the derivative with respect to y of the derivative of z with respect to the same y that we had before right so these are the second order derivatives that we are talking about and also it cannot be like this it can be a combination of both, it can be combined X and Y at the same time. Let me try to have them here so that yeah, we have all our formulas on the same page and you understand me properly here. We can have also a combination of the two, a derivative, uh, the second derivative of Z with respect to X and also with respect to Y at the same time. Take note, it's with respect to X, with respect to Y at the same time. So this is given as the derivative that we are going to obtain with respect to X. So it will be with respect to X. The first one, you take it with respect to X of the derivative of, Z, just like this part, the derivative, but now it's Z with respect to Y. It's no longer X is squared. There is a Y there. So it will be the derivative of Z with respect to, with respect to Y, all right? Also, it can be the second derivative, all right, with respect to Z of Y with re also with respect to X. So this will be the derivative with respect to Y. The first thing, the first one, the derivative with respect to Y of the derivative of Z with respect to X. We're going to have the derivative of Z with respect to, with respect to X. So that is the idea. And always these two, they are always equal these two they're always equal so in most cases they'll ask you to prove that all right they are going to ask you to prove this all right you are supposed to 
prove this in exam. So they can actually ask you. Uh, they can actually ask you that to, to prove this. We shall see as we move on with our introduction. So uh, basically, this is what you are going to, to need uh, or that what you're going to work with. So I'm just going to try by all means to explain one or two things that are required. Then we'll see uh, with the question papers later on. And, else, and also, you are supposed to also go back to N5, revise uh, the application of the products. That is the application of the product rule, the application of the quotient rule, all right? All this part, we have to go back and revise again, and also the chain rule, all right? Just uh, even N4, even N4, you can do that. It's one of the same thing. I just want you to know the basics. We talked about these uh, in our previous stages, if you were part of Maths on African Motives. Uh, but anyways, uh, we just have to go back and look into these so that we'll see, because sometimes you might have a where it is needed or where we need to apply these. So that's why I'm saying you just have to, you must have a recap of what you did before. All right, anyways, let us check questions now. Given that Z, all right, from our formulas and so forth that we listed, given that, all right, uh, let us just say this is our first question. We are given, uh, in this case, Z being equal to uh, 4X squared, Y to the exponent of 3. I'm just going to uh, try to explain the idea of what we have been talking about before. All right, we say it. In this case, we can have the derivative of z with respect to x, with respect to y. There are two variables that we have, okay? So given this, we can have a lot of questions to be asked. Okay, the first question, let's say, we are being asked to find the derivative of z with respect to x. All right, so we're going to find uh, the first one, the derivative of z with respect to x. Okay, what did I say? I said at this moment, when you are finding the derivative with respect to x, you treat the other variable as a constant. And what is the other variable? There are only two variables here, x and y. So we are working with x at this moment. So y in this place is going to be treated as a, as a constant. So if y is a constant, it means it's a number just like three, just like four, just like seven, any number that you can think of, just like this four that you see. So do you differentiate four? No, you don't. You differentiate x. So it is the same thing with 4y cubed because y is a constant. We are not going to differentiate or we are not going to talk about the part of y. It is the same thing as 4. So it means we've got 4y to the exponent of 3 as our, as our constant. Just like uh, I want to differentiate 2x to the exponent of 3. What do I do? I differentiate this. The 2 is multiplying, so it's 2 times what I get from this, which is 3x squared. Remember your derivatives from N4. Then the 2 is a constant, which will multiply the answer, so it will be 6x squared. So next year, since we're just multiplying 3 times 2, 6, then we subtract 1. That, that was the case. This is exactly what we are doing here. So we are just putting aside our constant. Then it multiplies the derivative of what is being affected with respect to x. So if we differentiate this with respect to x, what are we going to have? We drop the exponent in this case, which is two, so this will be two x. So that will be two x to subtract one, so it will just remain as two x. So this is the derivative with respect to x. But our answer, as we know, it has to be multiplied to what? To the constant. So therefore, the derivative of z with respect to x is going to be given as four times two, which is eight x y to the exponent of three. So that is the derivative that we have. Okay, let, let's do this. The derivative of uh, z with respect to y. So what does it mean? It simply means that at this moment that we are differentiating with respect to y, x, which is the other variable that we have there, is a constant. So x at this moment is the one to be considered as a constant, a number, just like a number. So you find the derivative of y, but x is this part here for x squared, everything there is a constant. Remember, 4 is already a constant. So we are going to have 4x squared representing the constant times the derivative of y, the derivative with respect to y now. 
So you're going to drop the exponent here. So it will be 3. Why? We remember, we subtract 1. So 3 minus 1, that will be a 2. So that is the derivative of z with respect to y. So you're going to multiply this. 4 times 3, that will be 12. x squared, y squared. We have differentiated with respect to y. At that moment, x was not even touched. It was a constant. It's a constant. It's not touched. It's not affected. This is what I was explaining here, that for you to have the derivative width of z with respect to x, y at that moment is considered as a constant. You differentiate with respect to x. That's it. That's, that's the condition. But we can also have the condition of the second order like that. We, we Okay, just the same way. Okay, we talked about this. So this is what's going to happen. Let us just add another question from the same uh, given question that we have. Uh, let us say the question now needs us to find uh, k number three. Uh, it needs us to find the second derivative of z with respect to x. All right, this is the second order. Remember, we said for us to separate z with respect to x is going to be the derivative with respect to x, because you're talking of x there, of the derivative of z with respect to x again, because x is being squared. So it's repeating the derivative of z with respect to x like this. So there is no way you are going to obtain this here without this derivative of z with respect to x. So therefore, it was actually a need for us to have this. So already we calculated this because it's a continuation is still from the same question. So this we already found it. But if it was a question differently, you had to determine it aside, then you substitute. But here we already calculated this. So we are not going to uh, repeat the derivative of z with respect to x because already it's there, the derivative of z with respect to x. Okay, so this is what it means. Remember, we want the second now. So you say this means, here it means we differentiate with respect, we are differentiating with respect to x. What are we differentiating? What we differentiated before the z with respect to x. So this is what it means. We're going to differentiate with respect to x. What we differentiated before, the derivative of z with respect to x, which is this one. That is your derivative of z with respect to x. You are going to take the answer from your previous question, all right? You have to differentiate it again with respect to what? To x, to x, to x. That is the condition there, to x. So we are back again that y is still a, a constant. Y is still a constant at that moment. Guys, let, let, let us be clear here. We are saying this was our question. Whatever that you are differentiating, if you are working with one variable, with x, y is a constant. With y, x is a constant. So here we are differentiating with respect to what? We are here, we are here now. This is where we are. With respect to, with respect to x. So y is a constant. So... If y is taken as a constant, we are just like the previous case that we had. It means we are going to do now we are differentiating. And we said y is a constant. So 8y cubed is not affected because we are saying this is a this is a constant. What is going to be affected? It's x. X is the variable at that moment. That is our variable, the one that we are working with. So what is the derivative of x? The derivative with respect to x is a 1. Okay? Remember? Just like we're given 2x, we just take the constant. So that is the idea there. So meaning to say if you multiply 8y cubed times 1, you're going to have 8y cubed. So this is the second derivative that you're going to have of z with respect to 2, with respect to x. All right? With respect to x. So guys, you have to be very, very careful. What are you working with at that moment? Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Let's add another question. Maybe it, 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 can, be, it can be more clear. We want to have the, the higher order again for this, the second order, which is in this case, the second derivative of Z with respect to Y. 
So with respect to why it means here, we are going to have the derivative with respect to y of the derivative of z with respect to y that we calculated before. So it's going to be the derivative of z with respect to y. Remember your formulas. Don't forget. Don't you forget here. The derivative. Okay, second derivative here. We are talking about with respect to y. So it's the derivative with respect to y of what? Z with respect to y. The one that you calculated before. So meaning to say this is just a continuation from this part that we calculated because we already have here the derivative of z with respect to y we calculated. We got 12y cubed. So this, it means we are going to have the derivative with respect to y of this part that we got, which is 12x squared y squared. So you just have to substitute d, you said the y. But what it means now, this is the most important are you able to interpret this? What does it mean? It means we are differentiating, yes, with respect to what? With respect to y. So what does it mean? It means the other variable, not y, which is x, is a constant. So if x is a constant at this moment, what does it mean? We are just going to take this as it is. It's not differentiated. So 12x squared is not affected because it's a constant. We differentiate y, that is y to the exponent of 2. When I drop the exponent, that's 2. y to the exponent, we subtract 1. So 2 minus 1, that's what? That's a 1, which is same as 2y. So this is the derivative with the respect of this part of y. It's going to give us 2y. We multiply everything. 12x squared times 2y, that will be 12 times 2, which is 24x squared y. So there we have got the derivative, the second derivative of z with respect to y. And these two are not equal. No, they are not equal. They are not the same. That was of x, that was of y. I said the only two things that can be equal is when you consider the part of x and y at the same time. All right, let me put it this way because yeah, these ones are not equal. And now I just hope you understand what just happened there, uh, these applications and this and that, so that we can check another question. So from... The previous questions that we had are still on the same question. Remember, we had question three, question four, and so So now it's question five. We are still here. But remember, we also said we're going to have these two conditions here. The five and six, which are the same at the, at the same plan. And they can ask you to prove that these two are actually equal. So we want to prove that, all right? That is a... Uh, the second derivative, so you're gonna it's a continuation, guys. Don't 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 freak out. We are still on this set here, and still with the first derivative and first derivative with respect to y, the ones that we calculated before. All right. And we did question one, two, three. Now it's question four. Now it's question five. I mean, we did one, two, three, and four. So we want to have the second derivative set with respect to x and with respect to y. Do not confuse with the previous question. It was of z with respect to only one variable, which is x. It was x squared. There, there are now two variables. It's with respect to x, with respect to y. So we said in order for us to separate this, it means the derivative with respect to the first one. The first one is the one that you start with. It's with respect to what? With respect to x. So it's going to be the derivative with respect to x of what of what is remaining z and y so it's going to be the derivative of z with respect to y so it's a formula that you need to know because uh you you need to apply this as it is right so from there let's interpret what does it mean because the interpretation the interpretation is the most important thing it means here we are going to differentiate with respect to x the derivative that we had before of z with respect to y. We had this derivative before. We calculated z with respect to y. This is it here. So you're going to take this as it is. The derivative with respect to x of what we got before. Remember, take note, it was with respect to y before. That part does not matter. All right? So that's 12x squared, y squared like this. But now it is differentiated with respect to x, not with respect to y, no. 
Don't confuse to say you took this from Y, so you're going to differentiate again Y. It was on that previous question where it was like this, the derivative of Z with respect to Y. This one, it means you are differentiating with respect to Y what you had from the derivative of Z. So if it is like this, uh, the derivative with respect to Y of the Z with respect to Y, which is this one, uh, which is 12X squared Y squared. This is the one that we did previous. Here we, we, we are differentiated with respect to Y. That's why I said 12X squared is a constant because X is constant as a constant. We differentiate Y. So it gave us 24X squared Y. But here, guys, we are seeing on this one, we are differentiated with respect to X. So Y is the one that is a constant, this one. Y is a constant. That's the difference that we have. Y here is now a constant because it's with respect to X. So Y is a constant. So if Y is a constant, it means we are going to ignore every constant as it is. We ignore it. We're going to be 12 Y squared because it's a constant. It's not affected. We are, we, it's, a it's not like uh, we have got uh, 12 X squared plus Y. This is different. On this one, you differentiate this. You differentiate this. All right. But this one, it's, it's a product, remember? Just like 2x, like uh, 2x cubed. How do you differentiate? 2 is a constant. It's not affected. It's just 2 times the derivative of this, which will be uh, 3x squared. That's, that's how you differentiate normal. So it is the same thing that we are having in this case. All right? That's the same thing that we are having. So we are differentiating now the part of x. Why? It's a constant. So the x is the one that we are differentiating. So it's going to be... 2x, all right? So you're going to multiply uh, 12 times this, that'll be 24. So you're going to have 24x uh, y squared, okay? Let's prove this with the second one. The second derivative again of uh, z, all right? So you're going to have z this time with respect. We're going to start with y. This was dx, dy. So they can give you as dy dx, and they want you to prove this. So, guys, they just want you to have confusion. There's nothing here. Just like the previous case, we had Z with respect to Y of the one of Y. So it's the first one, always the first. Z, the derivative with respect to Y. So it's going to be the derivative with respect to Y of the derivative of Z with respect to X now. With respect to X. So it, 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 it is opposing. There it's Y. But you are taking it from that one of Z with respect to X. So what was the derivative of Z with respect to X? I mean, sorry, uh, the derivative of Z with respect to X is here. It was given. So you're going to have the derivative with respect to Y of the derivative of Z with respect to X, which is going to give us 8X Y cubed like this. So we have substituted everything, but can you interpret? That is the question. Because we, are, we, are, we must be able to interpret this. What does it mean? We are differentiating, right? With respect to what? With respect to y. So what does it mean? X is a constant. So this part here is a constant. So you're going to take 8x, then we differentiate y. So if we differentiate y, what's going to happen? If we differentiate y, we drop the exponent 3. Then we subtract one on the exponent. Remember our normal uh, derivative. So this will be y squared. So we're going to multiply 8 times 3, which is 24x y squared. So as we can see, these two were calculated differently, but the answers are the same. That's why I said this. They'll ask you to prove this. So therefore, uh, we can note that. Therefore, the second derivative that we had of that with respect to x like this, all right, and y is equal to uh, the one for z with respect to y and x like this. Okay, that's it. We have managed to prove this. They, uh, uh, like I said, they can actually ask you this. So you are supposed to expect similar questions like that. Similar questions like this. Okay, so, okay, that's it. Um, basically, that's it. Let us take a, a consideration of a given, All right? Let's say a given z is equal to the lean of x squared plus y squared. 
uh, uh, like this is a, a situation of Z being affected by two variables, but we want to see because this one, there's an addition that is happening, which is uh, important. So they can ask you to find or to determine this. All right, let's say we asked to find uh, the first one, you're gonna need the derivative of Z with respect to X. Uh, second one, you're gonna need the derivative of Z with respect to Y. Take note, we are dealing with a lean, a logarithmic in this case, all right? From our N5, we talked about differentiating a lean, which is the logarithmic. If you are given, uh, we want to take it as lean f of x in a normal sense. Lean f of x is given as one over one over f of x of the derivative with respect to x of what of f of x. This is how you differentiate what. This is how you differentiate a lean. All right. I want to explain this way. All right. Let me take it this way so that I'll be able to explain it. We are saying whenever we are going to work or we are going to see a lean, uh, that will be, if we are given to differentiate with respect to x, a lean f of x. We saw that this will give us 1 over f of x, all right? Uh, we're going to have 1 over f of x times the derivative with respect to x of f of x. This is what you have on your formula sheet. So what does it mean here? B, 1 over f of x is the function of x as it is. So it means as I'm considering with respect to x, like my first equation, it's with respect to x. It means I'm considering x because y, we know that y is considered as what? As a constant as the, at, at this moment. So we, 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 are, we are considering z. I mean, we are considering x. X is to be considered there. So why it's a constant? So since it's a lean, it's a function of a lean and we have to differentiate where there is X. The question is that we're gonna have this as, this will be your F of X at this moment because you are considering with respect to X. So this whole part, it tends to be your F of X at this moment. That is for this question, it tends to be your F of X. So as we are saying one over F of X, it means one over F of X, which is X squared plus Y squared times the derivative with respect to x of f of x, this is our f of x. So we're going to need its derivative, the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y squared. How do you differentiate this with respect to x? Remember, we said y is a constant. So we are going to differentiate x squared. What do you get from x squared? We get to x plus. Since it's an addition, we have to add the derivative with respect to y which is a constant, it's like you are given to differentiate x squared plus 4. x squared plus 4. 4 is a constant. What is the derivative of 4? It is a 0. That's a constant. So if you differentiate a constant, you get a 0. This time, we are differentiating a constant because it's a separate term. It's different from it's given as x squared, y squared. Where you are asked to differentiate this, this one is a single term, but we are just saying y is a constant, so it will be y squared times the derivative with respect to x, which is going to be 2x. So this is different, so it's going to be 2xy squared. But this one, it's a, it's a sum, there are two terms there. It's like a sum or there's a difference, uh, x cubed minus y to the exponent of 4. If you are to find the derivative of z with respect to x, you just differentiate your x as it is. This will give us 3x squared, you drop the exponent, we subtract 1, minus y, it's a constant, whether it's raised to the exponent of 1,000 or what, it will give you a 0. It's just like 100, like 2, like 3. So it will be 3x minus, which is same, uh, 3x squared minus, which is same as what? Which is same as 3x squared. So that's what I'm trying to explain here to say why there is a constant. So if you differentiate that y, you are going to obtain what? A 0. It does not affect anything. All right, but you can just combine this as uh, the derivative of z is going to be given as, so 2x plus 0, guys, we say that's a 0 there. So you're going to multiply the numerator to the numerator, 2x times 1, which is 2x over x squared plus y squared times this 1 in the numerator. So this will be x squared plus y squared. All right, so that's it. Going to have uh, that is in that way, okay? Let's consider the second question the derivative of z with respect to y. So at this moment, we are now properly understand that x 
is the one that is now a constant. So if x is a constant, it means our function is no longer of x, just like before, where we said we're going to uh, have this as f of x. This is no longer f of x. You are now treating this function as f of y because you are supposed to differentiate with respect to y. So just take a closer look on your formula it was given. So it's going to be d dy, where we had f of x is going to be f of y in this case, 1 over f of y, the derivative of f of y, because you are considering y as a function, as a variable, that is the one affected. So not x. x is just a constant at that moment. x is just a constant. All right? So the part of x squared is a constant, but the formula here does not change that. If you differentiate a lean, it is going to be 1 over that function, all right, which is the function of x or the function. This time we talk about the function of y. It is representing the function of y, so it's going to be 1 over x squared plus y squared as it is. But it is now treated as a function of y. It was a function of x before because here it was with respect to x. So we, we took it as 1 over f of x. But now it's no longer f of x. It's now f of y. Okay? Times the derivative with respect to y here. Not x, but the derivative with respect to y of f of y, which is our function here. We're going to differentiate with respect to y. So let's differentiate. What are we going to have? x squared. What is the derivative of x squared? x is a constant. So if you differentiate a constant, what do you get? You get a zero. Whether it's 100 to the exponent of 1000 or what it gives you as a constant is a constant, all right? Plus the derivative with respect, remember it's with respect to, to y. So if we are differentiating y, y is our variable. This time. It is the one that we are after. Okay, we are after y. So if you differentiate this part of y squared, you're going to drop the exponent. So that will be 2y subtract 1. So that's it there. So just like the previous case, we can't leave it like this. We're just going to simplify. Uh, this is same as over 1. And also to note that 0 plus 2y is just going to be 2y. So that's 1 times 2y, which is 2y over x squared plus y squared uh, times 1. This will be x squared plus y squared. Okay, so that's it. The derivative there with respect to x, the derivative there with respect to y. Okay, so those are your partial derivatives. So we have a lot of things that you have to consider on partial derivatives, but for the first uh, class that you're going to have, uh, this is it. going to come again, uh, but make sure that you join the membership. By joining the membership, it gives you unlimited a learning platform in terms of your question papers, in terms of the introductions that are part of your syllabus. So make sure that you join the membership for N6, uh, which is the last one, the medium, uh, which is written medium, N6 uh, studies, all right? Uh, for N6, join the one that is for your level. We are in N6 now, so you're gonna work with the one for N6, but more to come from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.